morning. Good morning. We just left uh, Badlands National Park. We got up early-ish this morning. We got up morning. before the sun did. <laughs> and we had another nice sunrise. Did. But it was windy last night. Yeah. I think that's pretty common for it to be windy there when you're camped on the edge. Because um, we were in the park yesterday and it wasn't windy. Yeah, and when we went this morning, we went, it was we like it was like again this morning, breezy, yeah. but not really windy. Not windy like it was last night. But so. it was like howling windy, like it was noisy. Yeah, it was yeah, really noisy. It wasn't the best sleep in uh, yeah. weather. Yeah, so we didn't get up as early as we were hoping to. So, but we did manage to get out and get a couple of shots this morning. And uh, now we are making our way to the Custer area. Not sure yet where we're gonna land, but we know we wanna spend a couple of days around Custer State Park and uh, check out the sites there. So that's where we're going. Yeah, so I'm routing towards Rapid City right now. And then um, once we get there, we'll figure out, look at iOverlander, see if we can find a spot to uh, set up the rig. And then we'll go tour around with the Jeep and see what we can find. Marianne and Gord here from the future after our last little video inside of our truck and filming for the entire day, we realized that our mic system wasn't properly connected to our GoPro and we had no audio. So for the first part of this video, we're just gonna voice over our adventures for the day. As we went through Rapid City, we found a state park information center just south of Rapid City on Highway 16, got some great information about a campsite we could stay at at a state park i believe in deerfield lake so we continued down highway 16 to hill city and then about 30 minute drive up past hill city to deerfield lake so we disconnected the jeep at the campground and then we carried on in the jeep to explore the needles highway brought us down to the inter intersection here and we traveled through the needles highway the needles highway is only a 14 mile highway but it takes you about an hour to get through. There are some narrow tunnels, so don't try and go through in your big RV or big vehicle. I believe eight feet wide is the narrowest tunnel and nine foot eight high. So not very big. We definitely wouldn't take our beast through there, but the Jeep fits just great. So we carried on through the Needles Highway back down to 16A.
that was the Needles Highway. It was pretty good. That was fun. Yep. Where are we we just got to figure out where we're going now. I don't know where we're going now. We're on a loop. Kind of. So, I'll show you. From Hill City, we came down this 87. That's the Needles Highway. I don't know why they don't label it as Needles Highway on the map, but they don't. And I think maybe it's 16A we go up. After getting back out on Highway 16A, we carried on towards the Iron Mountain Road. But then we came across a visitor center and stopped in for some information. At the Tourist Information Center, we learned about the annual bison roundup that was happening that weekend. And that roughly 24,000 people attend the event and lineups start near 3 a.m. in the morning. So we decided that we were going to forego that and just try and find some bison on our own. So the lady at the Tourist Information Center then directed us to take the wildlife route. We started on our way and came into the bison center and corrals as they did have some bison already corralled there for us to see. So while we were at the bison center checking out the buffalo, we uh, took a few minutes and walked into the gift shop to grab some snacks and some cold drinks. And we stumbled across some South Dakota pretzels from the South Dakota Pretzel Company. They're gourmet pretzels. And uh, as far as Gord is concerned, they are... They're the best pretzels in the world. <laughs> they, were, they were the yummiest pretzels we ever had. We carried on on the Wildlife Loop Road. Shortly after the Bison Center, we came across a group of real-life cowboys and cowgirls coming in from herding buffalo. Then shortly after that, we saw our first huge herd of buffalo. We found buffalo. Lots of them. Play with the tree. Scratching his head. And then a little further down the road, we came across our first buffalo jam. These herds of buffalo are on both sides of the road, in the middle of the road, and the vehicles are stopped. Sitting there in the Jeep with no air conditioning and I think 37 degrees Celsius, probably 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It became hot and the buffalo jam got old, but probably after an hour or so, we got through it. Coming out of the Custer Park Wildlife Loop Road, we continued back up to Highway 16A where we were earlier in the morning and got back to our original plan of driving the Iron Mountain Road. The Iron Mountain Road is also a nice scenic, windy road like the Needles Highway. It's only 18 miles long, but you can give yourself about an hour to get through. It has some nice tunnels, switchbacks, and cool old wooden bridges that have pigtail ramps coming off of them. There are a few viewpoints along the way where you come through tunnels where you can see the Rushmore Memorial site lined up through the brush they've cleared. So really a good road, that one.
Iron Mountain Road exits near Keystone, which is then just a short run down the road to the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. It's a free sight to see, just 10 bucks parking. So we parked up there, the sun was going down, we had some nice evening sun for the walk up to the, uh, what do you call it, a statue or monument. mountain, monument. But yeah, it's a big mountain. And uh, we checked that out, took some pictures, made our way down to the gift shop and got our mandatory sticker that we get everywhere. And then we carried on in the vehicle back to Hill City to find something to eat. It's getting dark soon and we're still 20 minutes from home or where we're parked up. I'm so hungry. We're hungry. I'm so hungry. we're going to eat in a restaurant. I think this is the first restaurant on this trip, no? Maybe. Maybe. I think it is. And we went for pizza. We haven't had pizza in a long time. Mangiano pizza, pizza, wood fired pizza, downtown Hill City. I'm excited. Yeah. Cheers. We're waiting for a table. 25 minute wait. So the pizza better be good. Mm. Good the way to good. good way to fill 25 minutes with cold beer after a really hot day. What is it? Something gold. Um, yummy. What is that? A veggie pizza? Oh, nice. Thank, thank you. you. Perfect. Thank you. It's um, a veggie pizza yeah, a veggie with pepperoni. Pizza. Yeah, with pepperoni. That's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah. I have a meat pizza with meat. That's the way to do it. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Pretty fancy breakfast this morning we're having. Coffee's going. It's my second one. And uh, we're just kind of chilling this morning and taking it slow. It's a uh, single digit Celsius outside and uh, the furnace ran a bit, but uh, leftover pizza warmed up in the cast iron pan uh, and a fried egg on top of mine. Mary Ann's having her straight up. That's living. So pretty this morning. Minus the hum of the generators, but it's pretty. say I'm a girl that loves pine cones we don't get these big pine cones where we live don't tell Gord I'm gonna hide these in the back of the Jeep it's our secret we're at Dutchman campground it's a National Forest campground starting September the 9th you can camp here for free it's primitive camping um, so no plug-ins no amenities but look at this fire pit picnic tables huge site absolutely beautiful when we got here yesterday, we were pretty excited because it had, uh, we were the only people here. And we spent the day out tooting around. Look at that. When we came back, the campsite was full. There's more that you can't see. Still pretty nice. So we made a plan this morning. Yes, the plan was to go to Custer, check out the town of Custer, and then do laundry somewhere along the way, either and, Custer or Hill City. Yeah, and go see uh, the Crazy Horse, and crazy mo horse. monument. Yeah. And so, in, yeah. instead... Well, we turned out of the campground and we said, hey, let's check out the other campground. And then we turned the other way and we went farther up. And then we talked to a sign lady at road construction she told us about this flag mountain that's a little farther up and so now we're driving up this dirt road to flag mountain whatever that is it's supposed to be a good lookout i think we're on the right road she said it doesn't really have any signs it's the highest point in the area and it supposedly has a wicked lookout there's like intersections galore and none of them have signs we so have i'm not really sure you have no well, idea that's called flag mountain road oh. on the gps oh. dust <laughs> I have no idea where we're going. Fighting Mountain Lookout Road. Oh. Ha, see, good thing we have a GPS. Yeah, so we're going to go check it out. And then maybe we'll get to our original plan. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, she wasn't kidding. This is beautiful. So we've gone as far as we can go in the Jeep. And uh, now we gotta walk up there to get right to the tippity top. So Gorch is grabbing the drone and then we're gonna walk up. structure was once upon a time. If anybody knows, drop us a comment. Let us know what it was. It was quite the structure at one time. a pin for that on our uh, patreon page also just so you know anytime that we get a campsite or a lookout or anything like that that we really like and that we want to share with you guys we are going to drop a pin uh, for that spot along with some information of it on our patreon page so go over there check it out become a community supporter um, but that was beautiful and I guess it's just kind of one of those things that you got to talk to a local and that lady. Um, it always that pays was, to talk to the locals. Yeah, that was doing the flagging. She's like, oh, you got to go and check this out. Because we we told her we were just kind of snooping around the area at the different campsites and whatnot. And she's like, oh, well, you got to go up um, Flag Mountain Lookout and check it out. Um, that was so worth it. That was really cool. So um, four wheel drive or truck, don't go up there in yeah, your little commuter you car. Not only you, you don't need four wheel drive, <laughs> no. but you want a little bit of ground clearance. You want some it's a little bit SUV rough. of some sort. Don't yeah. go up in uh, you know a little Honda Civic or something like that. Yeah, that so, wouldn't be good. That wouldn't You'd be probably good. Probably <laughs> lose your oil pan on the road. <laughs> but that was awesome. So thanks to the lady who uh, suggested that we come up here. Thanks for the suggestion yeah. to go up with the lookout there. It That's was awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It is so it's pretty. Good. So yeah. all that right there is called Peshla. For us Native Americans, that's our sacred land, like right, all that prairie right there. Oh, yeah. Cool. That is beautiful. beautiful. It is so pretty back here. We're on our way to Custer. Taking the back way. Yeah. Taking the scenic route. Between Hill City and Custer, South Dakota, we're kind of oh. 
around Look. the back country. Can yeah, you see feels, it sparkle? It feels really lit up. Kind of looks white, but it's actually sparkling. I don't know if you, the camera picks it up or not, but ah, oh, look how pretty. Again, we're going for ice cream. Again. Back roads brought us to Custer. Oh, it smells good. And they have this old building. I said, look at that cool old building. And Marianne said, hey, it's an ice cream store and they're open. But it's a pretty mm. cool old building. You can smell the waffle cones. National Historic Bank. Oh, it is a bank, yeah. It was a bank. Cones. Bank of ice cream. Hi. It smells so good in here. That's an ice cream. Mm. And waffle cones. We got to stop this. I know, but. Maybe we'll walk around and check out yeah. the buffaloes. They got buffaloes on every corner that are painted. He's already got ice cream on his shirt. Yeah. This is tough. It's time to do adult things. No joyriding. <sighs> Laundry time. Oh, it's a Jeep thing. Going in here. Part of the West laundry mat. Let's do some laundry. We use detergent sheets. They work great and they don't take up any room in our rig. So that's what we use. And there's um, fabric softener. As you've seen um, in our videos from the last couple days, Gordon and I really like ice cream. But we don't always like just going out for ice cream. So I have a really simple recipe that I'm going to make right now. Um, it's awesome. It is, I don't know if you've ever had it or if you've seen the viral videos online for cottage cheese ice cream. I know it sounds weird, but it is probably some of the best ice cream you've ever had, especially if you like cheesecake. If you can run like a hand blender or if you've got enough to do, like I have like a ninja blender here, then this is something that you can easily make on the road. So three ingredients, let's do it. First ingredient, this is 16 ounces, it's just a small tub of cottage cheese. I prefer the higher fat if you can get it, 4%. It's tough to find in Canada, so 2% will work too. So you just add, you add the whole container into your blender. A third of a cup of maple syrup. If you don't like maple syrup or if you have an allergy, you can use any sweetener you want. Um, I just prefer uh, maple syrup. I put a good galunk of um, vanilla extract. But the, the beauty of this, flavor it however you want. So I'm going to put blueberries in this one, use strawberries, make chocolate, whatever you want, right? So these are your three main ingredients that just does your basic um, vanilla, right? Do that. And now I'm just going to add some uh, blueberries. You don't need too many. That's it. That's all and then you blend it really really well hopefully this blender works okay i haven't used this one we have a vitamix at home but I'm sure it'll be fantastic so then you're just going to blend this for a minute minute and a half depending on your blender until it is super smooth almost like a mousse okay Well, that barely used any power. That's cool. I'm just going to scrape down the sides a little bit because you don't want any lumps. God, it's purple. A little bit more. Ninja, you're good, but you are not a Vitamix. So, if you want, 
You can just pour it in a little bowl and refrigerate it and eat it like a really thick pudding, kind of like a mousse. You can put it into a big container, stick it in your freezer, and then when you're, let it harden. And then when you're ready to have some ice cream, let, leave it out for 15 minutes or so. So it softens enough that you can scoop it. But the way that we really like it, which also allows for portion control, because you really could just eat this whole thing, is um, I make popsicles. So, which is awesome. It's just a quick little easy way and it fits really well into our little tiny freezer. Look at that. So let's put tops on. Leave them in there for six to eight hours. And you'll be good. While we were out and about, we got a message from our friends from back home saying that they were in the area and uh, wanted to meet up. So they came out to our campsite and we had a campfire that night, did some catching up, shared some travel stories, made plans for the next day. So stay tuned to our next episode where we spend the day exploring the rest of the Black Hills.